Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, we will see another use case for using uh, consumer Im interface implementation in 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 our test automation space. Right? We have seen about uh, you know how we can use this in far each, right? And then we also see how we took a you know use case from our uh, test automation space, and then we have actually implemented that. But this is the next use case where we, uh, you know, we, we tend to normally have a lot of select drop downs in our uh, UA automation uh, thing. So how we can effectively use the consumer interface here. That's what the agenda for this particular video. And without wasting much time, let me get into the Eclipse workspace, right? To save some time, I have already created a basic snippet out of this. So, so I'm launching my Chrome here and I'm, I'm loading this particular website let me go to the website to give a clear understanding what i'm doing trying to do so for the first one is i have a select drop down here and then uh, if you notice if i inspect them um okay so this is a select drop down that has uh, options as if you see uh, the red blue green yellow these are all the text if you want to select by text you need to use these things and if you want to use the values to select them then you for the red alone you need to use red for the others you need to use one to ten or you can also use index the index starts uh, with zero for the red and one for the blue and consecutively consecutively increase it so this is how it is i want to select this drop down you can imagine this is a very simple piece of code what i am going to do with this lambda all right so that's what we're going to see so basically i have created a web element uh, reference here and uh, so this is the id for that so it's very very simple you have an id directly i'm using an id to find the web element and normally right if you want to reuse something you create a reusable method that's what i have done this is a very common method that you can create to select a value from a drop down based on three different ways we have we can select a value based on text we, we can select a value based on text we can select a value based on the value and then we can select by index so there are three different ways that you can do so i have wrapped all of them in this particular method this is the conventional way the imperative way of coding things right so you pass your web elements you pass your text or the value or the index, whatever it is to the to the method. And you also mention the strategy, right? Which on what strategy you want to do it. Again, you can create it as a enum, but for now I'm using a string so that, uh, you know, it's just a demo purpose, right? So if the strategy is text, then I will select by visible text, right? And I'll, I'll pass the value, whatever you're sending. The so same way, if I if the strategy is value, I am passing the select by, selecting by value and then uh, I am passing the value, right? And then if the strategy is index, uh, you know, I am passing it with the, with the string and then I am just, you know, converting back to integer and then I am selecting by index, right? Again, if you don't want to do this, maybe you can create an overloader method where you can passing integer and then uh, do it. Again, guys, it's absolutely fine. But for now, this is a very simple use case that I have took. And this is pretty, pretty common, right? If the, if, if the strategy is not matching, I can either throw an exception or you can uh, print it uh, invalid strategy. So very, very cool code. There is nothing problem with the code. If you see, yes, everything will work fine. Let's see whether it is working fine, right? If something is working, then there is no need to optimize them, right? Let's see whether it is working, right? So you notice it's it's red, magenta. it's changed to magenta. it's changed to blue, and then it will also change to yellow. So it's it's actually doing all the three clicks, right? Because we asked that to do, right? So we have asked that to do three different things. So first we are selecting the value using text. Then we are selecting the value using uh, the value. And then we are selecting uh, using the index, index three. So we, basically it is doing all these things. This statement here is basically your thread dot sleep. You can imagine it like that, but you know, the, the use cases, you don't have to throw the exceptions on other stuff. Good. So this is working. So what is the need? How, how can we implement Lambda? How can we optimize this particular set of code? So if you guys notice, we are the writing if conditions and you know, you know, I hate if condition because there are a lot of chances that you can make mistake in this. So what we can do, how we can optimize this piece of code here with a, with a consumer interface. So let's take, I have created the same thing. So let's take, um, Public static void uh, select uh, from drop down. Okay. 
dog bro. okay and here um, let me pass a consumer but this consumer requires a select class right now let me press control and one then there is a mistake here okay for your mouse and uh, it's important so consumer and you also pass the web elements i'll explain this guys you will understand how we, easy it is to code right so hover your mouse over this and then import it from java.util.function. This is a little cool. Now, whatever the consumer I have, let's take um, select, select equal to new select. And then what are the web element that is coming? I'm gonna convert to a select, right? Good, this is really, really easy consumer dot accept now with this accepts a select so i can pass the select so it's as simple as that so how can we use this so instead of writing all these things okay instead of writing like this okay maybe i'll remove all of them control d and i just comment this out okay now let's try to do it with with this particular value okay so it's select select from drop down now I need to pass a consumer. So if I pass something e e dot select by visible text, I can select using visible text. So this is the consumer side. Right? It accepts a select class thing and then it's selecting the value based on the text that we pass. What is the element? So this is the element that they want to do. Okay, that's it. Send it there. So it'll do the job for you. So you are defining what needs to be done. So the code here becomes very clean now. So because before it has a lot of code, now it just has two lines of code. Again, it doesn't have to be always two lines of code. You can you can directly call like this, right? And then here you can remove this. Okay, now your code is just one line. You have a method that is one line but can do multiple purpose, right? Let's copy this and we also have select by value right so select by value and then i want to select by value of three right and then you can also select uh, by using index here the good thing is you don't have to do the type casting uh, sorry converting from uh, integer string it doesn't matter you are passing the consumer itself the implementation itself so you can pass directly the index so let's say i am sending an index like six let's try to check whether it is working right now the code is very very clean guys we just have one line of code that can do all the three jobs right let's see how whether it is working fine or not okay it's now magenta and then uh, it switches to yellow and then it will also use a index that is white now right so this is really really cool right we have written just one line of statement to do the job for us so I hope you all can understand. So we are passing a consumer that accepts a select class element, right? So whatever the select you pass, okay, whatever the select that you pass, I'm gonna select it using visible text. So we are giving client more control instead of we having more control. If you notice, we are having more control. Client is passing us a lot of parameters. And then we do the logic ourselves. We are writing a lot of logics and then we are doing it. But here, we are giving the client the control to change on, on the fly. So now if they have a requirement that you need to select by index, they can directly present implementation itself that whatever the select that I give, you select by using index and the index value is six, as simple as that. You can just you know take this knowledge to your automation framework. You can implement it wherever it, it seems applicable. The good advantage is we have written just one line of code. Okay, let's, okay, Amudan, this is fine. What else we can do with this? Okay, let's assume I also have one more drop down here. If you notice, we have one more drop down that is called as standard multi-select. Okay, so let me, you know, inspect this. Um, let me dock this down so that it's more easy. Okay, now if you notice we have ideas cost and then we have a lot of options here. I want to select all of them or at least some of them or I want to select only the last two. So how can we do this? Is there any way that we can easily do this? Okay, in the conventional way, you can imagine in your mind how we can do this. So you, you get everything stored in a list of element, okay? 
and then uh, so import it from java.util so you you store everything here and then you you run a for for loop and then you select the whatever thing you want but now we have an option okay options that we already have learned about the for each see this is accepting a web element so whatever the web element you pass so whatever the web element that you pass you need to click it that's it very very simple this time it will click each of them right let's try to check whether it is working fine or not right this is as simple as that guys we have already learned about uh, consumers so i am not going in depth how to write uh, lambda expressions if you are new and then watching only this particular video please watch the previous videos so that you can understand what is going on here right so if you notice it selected all of them with just you know one 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 line of code with just one method it selected all of them but now i have a requirement that i want to select last two of them i don't want to do that so then you can either you can apply the logic here or you can make use of stream so stream is a method that helps you to convert a list into a stream of objects so guys i will come to the stream with a later point of time for now just assume a uh, stream you have a stream of river right you running right it has a lot of water that is running through it has a certain flow that is going now i have a stream that has list of web elements so i have a stream of web elements flowing into me i i can do a lot of operation what i want to do that with that so let's take and paint uh, open a paint let's assume um, we have we have learned about what is stream of uh, water right the same way i have stream of web element i have a web element coming one by one right now we have this coming one by one you can do whatever the operation that you want to do with it. in my case i want to click them so for now just understand this this converts the list into a stream right but for now it, this is enough we'll co come back to that later so you have a stream now we want to do whatever you want to do you can do that you can this will work but i want to do i want to you know do something else i want to select only the last two then what i can do then there is a method okay let me remove it let me remove it and then just press dot and then he see a if you notice any match all match there are a lot of things here right it accepts a predicate we'll come to the predicate you know in the next videos or a couple of videos but if you notice there are a lot of things here okay so basically you can use any of these to do some operations but in my case what i want to do i want to skip certain elements how many elements you want to skip i want to skip two of them after that what do you want to do i want to do uh, the remaining ones i want to click on them that's what i want to do okay so it's as simple as that guys you can you can use these already created methods that can do the job for you instead of you writing your own logic to to you know skip it and uh, selecting the different values right we we'll learn about predicate and then it it will make our job even more easier so if you notice it has only selected opal and audi right so that's how easy it is so right start please start to use all these functional programming into your java test automation framework and and tell me how easy it is right guys what do you feel about this video please leave it in your comment section it's very important for me to hear your feedback and um, i'll i'll see you in another great video until then tata bye bye friend more than you all have a very good day tata bye bye